Hello, STAT students. So today we are going to go over section 9.4. And um, so decisions and types of errors. So <clears throat> we have what's called type 1 and type 2 errors. And we have to come to this realization. All right. Here's the realization is that with hypothesis testing, since we are using data from a random sample, and really the word to concentrate on isn't the random part, it's, it's the sample. Okay. So that means we didn't get our data from a census. We have incomplete information. And because we have incomplete information, it is possible that we made a mistake, okay, in our decision. And it's not that we did anything wrong. Uh, you know, this idea that it says type one error or type two error, error makes it sound like we did something wrong. We actually didn't do anything wrong, okay? We, we did everything that we were supposed to do. We took our random sample, there was no calculation errors, nothing like that. This stuff happens simply by chance, okay? It's kind of bad luck, all right? And it can happen. And so I'm going to give you an example, a real life example here in a moment to clarify, okay? But let's continue on here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what are the different decisions that we could have made? We could have rejected them all and thinking the, uh, that, that the alternative is correct, or not rejecting them all, and we got inconclusive results, okay? And so we can simply be wrong in either one of these, okay? Why? Because we just, we were, we were only working with the sample and not with the entire population. So it's possible that we came up with the wrong conclusion. That's all, okay? <clears throat> so here's the thing is that most likely when we do a hypothesis test, most likely we did make the right decision, okay? If we should have rejected them all, it, you know, we, we end up usually rejecting them all, okay, and vice versa, okay? Um, and so we usually make the right decision, but every once in a while, because of bad luck, okay, just because of the random sample that we got, okay, we came up with the wrong conclusion, okay? And so, um, so what is a type 1 error? A type 1 error is rejecting a true null hypothesis. So we decided to reject the null. Oh, well, there's true. Now, there's another way of thinking of this, okay? So if we rejected the null hypothesis in the, in the hypothesis test, that means that we thought HA, the alternative, was correct, all right? And so another way of thinking is that we thought HA was correct, oh, but we were wrong. Simple as that, okay? That's another way of thinking of it, all right? So what I would do is I would learn this definition right here, okay? Rejecting a true rejecting a true null hypothesis for a type one error, all right? But maybe the way to thoroughly think of it is the second part, okay? It's a lot easier a lot of times to think of it in terms of the alternative, the researcher's hypothesis. By the way, the media has a name for this, believe it or not. It's called a false positive. So when you hear the media or medical field call the call something a false positive, believe it or not, they're giving type one error a different name. That's all. Okay, a type one error has been made, and it would be a false positive. All right, type two error, not rejecting a false, uh, not rejecting a false null. All right, and so that could happen. So what did we decide? We decided not to reject the null. All right, and what does that mean? We're we're where we have inconclusive evidence. It's possible that the null, the alternative is correct and we don't know which one it is, okay? But we were basically wrong in that decision. There was a, certainly a decision to be made there. So another way of thinking about it is that we could not conclude the alternative is correct. Oh, but it was, okay? But it was. And so <clears throat> uh, that would be a type two error, all right? So again, I would memorize this definition here Okay, but maybe this is the way you should think of it, right? And so uh, how's the media going to talk about this? False negative, okay? Now, what I need you to think of is that positives and negatives don't mean anything good or bad here, okay? Usually when you hear a positive, that's a good thing, negative, a bad thing. It has nothing to do with that, okay? The way you th should think of this is that when you hear a false positive, positive means that there was uh, test results that for whatever we were testing, it was the, the test picked up on it, okay? Oh, but it was wrong to pick up on it. Negative, ne negative meaning 
negative test results, meaning nothing was, the test thought nothing was there, oh, but it was wrong, okay? And so that's the way you should think of it here, okay? So now, to give you a real life example, I know this is gonna sound a little strange, but believe it or not, a pregnancy test gives you the most clear cut way of thinking of this, believe it or not, okay? So put yourself in this situation, you know, uh, if you're a female that you had a pregnancy test or, or uh, uh, if you're a male that, you know, friend, girlfriend, wife, um, I don't know, sister, they had to take a pregnancy test, okay? And the null hypothesis, believe it or not, a hypothesis test is basically being run in the background, okay? And the null hypothesis is that it's, it's the status quo of the female, that she's not pregnant. And the alternative is that she is pregnant. Uh, change from the status quo, all right? And so, um, is it possible that the test gave wrong results then? I mean, think about it. If So if, let's say that, that that somebody, a female, took a pregnancy test and got a positive sign, okay? And, but she doesn't want to be pregnant. What is she going to do? She's going to go, oh, I'm going to take another test because, why? Because she's hoping for a bad test result, right? I mean, a, you know, a false test result. That's what a type you know, that, that's what we're talking about here is that the test said one thing, but in reality, something else happened, okay? Or let's say somebody wanted to be pregnant, okay, and got a negative, all right? What do they may do? They may take another pregnancy test, you know, maybe a day later and let the hormones build up enough that uh, in, in her body that the test can detect those things, okay? And so she may take it again because she's hoping for a false, basically a false reading, from the first test, okay? And so um, that's what we're, believe it or not, that's what we're talking about here, okay? And so um, let's run through this, okay? So a type one error is rejecting a true null. Media will say that's a false positive, okay? And so another way of thinking of this is that we thought the alternative is correct, but we were wrong, okay? So in other words, uh, we decided from the test, okay, based upon the test, to reject the null hypothesis. So if we decided uh, to go ahead and reject the null, what did we think about the female? We thought that the female was pregnant, but in reality, she wasn't, okay? So define a type one error in words. This is what you're gonna have to actually do uh, on the test or in home and in homework, okay? But more in a statistical way versus say a um, uh, uh, medical test, okay? So we thought the female was pregnant, but in reality, she wasn't. Type one error, okay? So I already talked about the, what a positive means here, okay? Uh, all right, and, you, can, and you, can, you could go ahead and read that again closer, all right? So let's go through this. Type two error, not rejecting a false null. Media will say that's a false negative, okay? Another way of thinking it, we couldn't conclude that HA is correct, but we were wrong. So what we gotta do is define a type two in words here. So basically the test could not pick up that she was pregnant, okay? It had inconclusive evidence. So remember when you say do not reject the null hypothesis, you're basically saying we don't know if she's pregnant or not. We just can't pick up on it, okay? It could mean either one. So basically we said, oh, we couldn't pick up on she was pregnant, but in reality, she really was, okay? So we couldn't conclude the female's pregnant, but in reality, she, she was, okay? Type two in words, all right? So I already talked about what a negative means in terms of, of this, okay? You can, you can read through that. All right, so let's use a statistical example, all right? The Federal Reserve is constantly sampling U.S. households about how much money they have in savings for rainy days. So they want to know how much people have saved, okay? And so let's say that they go ahead and test if mu, the amount on average that people have, households have saved throughout the United States is equal to 12,000, that's, that's the null. Alternative, they're hoping that it's going to be greater than that, okay? That people have more of a reserve for, you know, for tragedies or, or, or uh, you know, Maybe with the coronavirus, you know, uh, people be out of work and stuff like that. So we're going to test if mu is greater than 12,000. Okay, so type 1 error, rejecting a true null. All right, so what did we do? We decided to reject the null. So we thought, what, the alternative was correct. 
if we thought the inter alternative was correct, we thought that mu was greater than 12,000, but it really wasn't. Okay, so another way of thinking is that HA is correct, but we are wrong. So type 1 error in terms of this problem. Based upon the test, we thought the mean savings for all U.S. households was greater than 12,000, but in reality, it wasn't. We thought mu was, uh, the alternative was correct, but it wasn't. Okay? That's kind of what you would have to do in, the pro in, in, in our problems for the test and even for homework. It's more like that. Okay? <clears throat> How about a type 2 error? Not rejecting a false null. Another way of thinking, we couldn't conclude that HA is correct, but we were wrong. Okay? So what do you think about this one? So we couldn't c conclude that mu was greater than 12,000, but in reality, it was. Okay? So, um, so to find a type 2 in terms of the problem, based upon the hypothesis test, we couldn't conclude that the mean savings for all U.S. households was greater than 12,000, but in reality, it really was. And why do these things happen? Bad luck. Bad luck. All right? So... Who chooses the level of alpha in a, in a real life problem? The researcher, but most likely it's the researcher is going to choose what a, uh, whatever the industry standard is. Okay, and so uh, you should know this: the probability of a type one error is equal to the significance level. So that's um, uh, so that's why <clears throat> um, we we talk about alpha here is because the probability. So a type one error itself is not the significance level. The probability of a type one error is the significance level alpha. So when we state that, we're stating what is the probability of making that type 1 error? What about probability of making a type 2 error? Well, we call that beta, okay, beta. And beta is, is, is a calculation. It's well beyond the scope of this course. It's kind of ugly, okay, so we're not going to get into it, okay? Uh, what I want you definitely to know is that alpha and beta are inversely related. So what does that mean? If the research, let's say that the researcher could play with alpha, okay? If the researcher increases alpha, what does that mean? Beta automatically decreases. So if you uh, go ahead and increase alpha, all right, you, beta will automatically lower. The probability of making a type 2 error would lower, and vice versa. So if a researcher could decrease alpha, beta automatically increases. And so what our industry has to do is they have to find that sweet spot between alpha and beta, okay? And because they are inversely related. As you protect against one error, you open yourself up to the other one, okay? So a doctor orders a test to determine if a patient has cancer. Let's say that we're talking about cancer. And so the null hypothesis is patient does not have cancer, patient has cancer, all right? So a type one error, if you think about it, is that the test indicated cancer. In reality, no cancer is pre present. Type two error is that test cannot detect cancer, but in reality, cancer is present. So what you gotta do in, in reality is, uh, I shouldn't say you, but these different industries that they got to figure out which one is the worst type of error. Is it a type 1 or a type 2 error? Think about it. And then once you think about it, come back to the video, all right? Maybe pause this video and come back, all right? Think about which one of these, if, if this was happening to you, which one is the more is the worst error to you? Which one's the more damning error, okay? So hopefully you thought about it, okay? And I think what you're going to find out is that the uh, medical field thinks that a type 2 error is the worst thing, is that... Uh, a test couldn't detect cancer, but the cancer was really present because now the person is not getting treated, and maybe the cancer is going to get into a different stage and get worse and worse and worse, okay, and to a point where it won't, can't be treatable, okay. Whereas a type 1 error, if, if the person, if the test indicates cancer but no cancer was present, what do you think is going to happen at that point? Are you just going to go straight to chemo or something? No, the way the, the, the medical field takes care of that is that they go send you to a specialist, and then what do they do? They run more tests, okay, to make sure that they're very comfortable in saying, okay, you have cancer, we need to do this now, okay? So that's how they, they, they so they try to protect against the type 2 error right away, all right? Um, and they protect against the type 1 error by running several tests over and over and over again, okay? So you can take a look at this video right here. That's a, it's actually a video of the it's, it's the nightly news with Diane Sawyer at the time, and they she talks about false positives and false negatives and how the ramifications of that with with this person uh, Judy. Okay, so uh, hopefully that will help you with section nine point four. Thank you.